In this video, we're going to have a look at shooting in Unity using ray casts. A lot of you guys said that my previous video on the subject was getting old. I just rewatched it and uh, yeah. So we'll have a look at creating a gun script where you can configure stuff like damage, range and fire rate. We'll also add a muscle flash, an impact effect and even add an impact force to the objects that we hit. So let's get started. So as you can see, I'm using a few assets here. I'm using the medieval arena, a crate from the Western props pack and the gun is from the sci-fi weapons pack. If you want to get any of these models for yourself, you can go to devassets.com and I'm just going to click on the sci-fi weapons pack here. You can check out the page and when you're ready you can select the price and hit the blue button. It is then going to download as a zip file that contains a unity package which is going to set everything up for you. So if we go ahead and hit play you can actually see that we can move around the scene. To do this I simply went into the project panel, hit import package, then characters and I went under the standard assets, characters, first person character and I dragged in the rigid body FPS controller. I simply renamed it to player. Under that we have the main camera and as a child of the main camera we have our gun object. And it's totally optional whether or not you want to have a graphic here. You could just disable this and have all of your logic sit on the main camera. But I think it looks a lot cooler if we can actually see the gun. Also when you put a gun graphic, make sure to select the main camera and decrease the clipping planes. Normally these are set to a much higher value which will cut off the gun. And we don't want that. Now that you've set up your gun graphic like you want it, we can go ahead and add a new script. Let's call it the gun script. Let's hit new script, select C sharp and hit create an ad. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we want to do is delete the two using tags at the top and the start method. We're going to need a few variables for our gun. First off, we want to be able to adjust the amount of damage that our gun will inflict to our opponent. So we'll create a public float called damage and set it equal to 10 by default. We'll also want a range. And let's default that to 100. So in order to be able to shoot, we need to get some input from the player. We'll do that in the update method. Here we'll add an if statement that checks if the player has pressed the fire button. So we'll go if input dot get button down and the button we want to check for is fire one. Remember fire one is one of the default buttons set up by unity and unless you change it it's going to map to the left mouse button. Let's open up some curly brackets and in here we want to place all of our shooting code. I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap this in a separate function. Let's call that one shoot and let's go down here and create it. So we'll write void shoot open close parentheses and the curly brackets. Now we can put all of our shooting code in here. In order to shoot we'll be using ray casting. This means that we will be shooting out an invisible ray starting at the position of our camera and then in the forward direction we're facing. If the ray hits something we can gather information about what we hit and if we hit a target we can damage it and if we don't hit anything we know that we've shot into thin air and so we can just do nothing. But in order to shoot a ray from our camera we need a reference to it. So let's go up here let's create a public camera and let's call it FPS cam. Then in our shoot method, we'll go ahead and create a new raycast hit. And this is a variable that we use to store some information about what we hit with our ray. And we'll just call this one hit info or hit for short. Close that off with a semicolon. Then to shoot out our ray, we'll go physics dot raycast. And there's a million different ways to shoot out a ray. As you can see here, we can take in a bunch of different parameters. Our case is fairly simple. We want to shoot out a ray starting at the position of our camera. So we'll put in FPS cam dot transform dot position. We want to shoot it in the direction we are facing. So we'll put in FPS cam dot transform dot forward. We want to gather some information and put it inside of the hit variable. So we'll write out hit. This means that Unity will automatically put all of the information we need into this variable. And then finally, and this is totally optional, we can input our range. So that if objects are further away than 100 units, we aren't going to be able to hit them. Now this should shoot out a ray in the way that we want it. And now we need to check whether or not we hit something. This is extremely easy in Unity. All we do is simply use this inside an if statement. Because this function will return true if we hit something and false if we don't. So we write if and then we wrap this entire statement in an extra pair of parentheses and then of course the curly brackets. So now everything in here only occurs if we've actually hit something with our ray. Let's begin by just displaying the name of the object that we hit in the console. So let's go debug.log and the information we need is inside the hit variable then dot we want to get the transform of the object that we hit and we want to get the name so we go dot name. Now if we save this, head into Unity and make sure to reference our FPS cam. In my case, that's going to be the main camera under the player. We should be able to hit play. If we now hit the wooden crate, it says wooden crate. And if we hit any of the other objects, it's going to display their names as well. Say the floor or the podium. Now this of course requires you to have colliders on the objects that you want to raycast against. On the wooden crate here, I've gone ahead and added a box collider. So we actually already have the core shooting in place. But there are a bunch of things that we can add on top. Let's begin by making it a bit easier to aim 
by creating a crosshair. To do that, we'll right click in the hierarchy, go UI and then image. As the source image, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the knob, but you can use any image you'd like. And for the width and height, I'm going to input 10 and 10. I'm also going to decrease the alpha a little bit and you can of course make this black if you like that better. I think I do. Now by default, this should be in the exact center of our screen. If it's offset, you can always click here, hold down Alt and click in the center. That should snap it right in place. We'll then rename this to crosshair and that should be all we need to do there. Now it's time to have a look at how we can apply damage to an object. In order to do that, we need to create a script for the target. If you're creating an enemy, you should call the script enemy, but in our case, we just have a wooden crate. So let's select that, add a new component and call it target. Let's go new script, create an ad and double click to open it in Visual Studio. Let's again delete the two using tags and both the update and the start method. Now this is going to be a really simple script. We of course need a health variable, I'll make that a public float and I'll default it to something like 50. We also need a function that will damage our target. We'll call this function from our gun script whenever we hit the target. Because we need to call it from another class, we have to mark it as public. So we'll write public void, take damage, and this time we don't want to leave our parentheses empty. Instead, we want to give our function an argument. An argument is a way to feed data into a function. In our case, we want to be able to specify a certain amount of damage. So we'll create a float and call it amount. We then just finish our function. And in here, we're going to subtract our amount from our health. So health minus equals amount. And the amount is going to be equal to the damage of our gun. In the case that our health reaches zero, so if health is less than or equal to zero, our enemy dies. Or in our case, our crate shatters. And that of course happens in here. So let's just go ahead and create a separate function for that. And we can put this into a separate function. Let's just call it die. And down here we'll make it. We don't need to be able to call this from another class. So we'll just write void die. And for now, we'll just go ahead and destroy the object. So let's call destroy game object. If we save that, we shouldn't actually get any errors. But of course, we aren't calling this function yet. And so nothing is going to happen when we shoot. We need to go into the gun script, go down into our shoot function inside our if statement where we actually hit something and we need to access that script. To do that, we use hit.transform, which is the object that we hit, dot get component. We can then find the target component on the object that we hit and we can store this in a variable. The variable is going to be of type target and let's just call it target as well. Of course, not all objects that we hit are going to have a target script sitting on them. We might hit environment pieces, vehicles or items we don't want to shatter. So we want to check if we found a target component. To do that, we write if target is not equal to null, meaning that we only want to do this if we've actually found a component. If we have, we can go target dot take damage. Remember, we can only do this because we made the take damage function public. And as the amount of damage, we're going to send our damage variable. So now when we save this, head into Unity, we shouldn't see any errors. And under our target script, we now have a health variable. It's currently set to 50 and our gun's damage is set to 10. So when we play, we should have to hit our crate five times in order for it to disappear. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, and it's gone. Now there's about a billion ways that we can spice this up. Let's begin by creating a muscle flash for our gun. In Unity, as with everything else, there are many ways you can go about creating a muscle flash. What I've done is gone ahead and created a particle system that sits on our gun. I'm just gonna go ahead and simulate it here so you can see what it looks like. It's just some really simple particles. They're set to non-looping, a very small duration and lifetime, and make sure to check off play on awake. I've also gone ahead and added a point light that is controlled by the particle system just to give it a bit of extra oomph. Once you've created a particle system that you like, we can go ahead and play it through code. To do that, we need a reference to the particle system. So let's go to the top here and add a public particle system and let's call it muscle flash. Then in the beginning of our shoot method, we'll write muscle flash dot play. When we now save and go back into Unity, select our gun and drag in the muscle flash. Let's hit play. And now every time we click the mouse, it's going to play our particle and a muscle flash is going to appear. Next up, we can create a hit effect at the point of impact. To do that, we use another particle system. I went ahead and imported the default particle systems by Unity. If you then go under standard assets, particle systems and prefabs, there's a flare particle that you can easily tweak to make a really good impact effect. Here's what I came up with after playing with it a little bit. So now that we have an impact effect prefab, we can go into Visual Studio, add a reference to this as well, and this time we want to reference it as a game object so that we can instantiate it into a scene. And we'll call this one impact effect. 
Of course, we only want this to occur if we hit something. So we can go ahead and create this at the bottom of our if statement. Let's write instantiate. Let's give it the impact effect. And the point that we want to instantiate it at is going to be hit dot point, which is the point of impact. We also want to give it a rotation. And the normal thing to do here is have the particles point out from the surface that we hit. To do that, we use the surface normal. This is a three dimensional vector that is perpendicular to the surface, which means that it points straight out. Of course, our instantiate method doesn't take a direction to look in. It takes a quaternion. So to give it a quaternion rotation, we go quaternion dot look rotation. This is going to take a direction and turn it into a quaternion and the direction is going to be hit dot normal. Let's then close everything off with a semicolon. If we save this, go back into Unity, select our gun and drag in our impact effect, we should see that when we hit play, we have this cool looking impact and it always orients itself nicely to the surface that we shoot. The only problem with this is that we are currently instantiating a lot of objects and during a game our hierarchy is really going to clutter up. So let's just make sure to quickly destroy these after use. To do that we need a reference to the object that we just spawned and we'll store that as a game object. We'll call it something like impact game object and set it equal to the instantiated object. Then beneath that line, we can go destroy and the object that we want to destroy is our impact game object. And we want to destroy it after say two seconds. Now our objects should clean themselves up. We can also add a bit of force to a wooden crate when we hit it. To do that, we need to have a rigid body on our crate. Then in our script, just like we get the target, we can simply add a line saying hit dot rigid body. And we have now accessed that rigid body component. So first off, we need to check if the object has one. So we go if hit dot rigid body is not equal to null. Then we go hit dot rigid body dot add force. This allows us to add a force in a given direction. Now we could both use the direction we're currently looking in or the normal of the surface. Both are totally standard. I'm just going to use hit dot normal and then make sure that the direction is going to go backwards. And we can multiply this with some kind of force. Let's go up here and create a variable for that. Let's make it a public float impact force. And let's default it to say 30. Then down here, we'll multiply with impact force. Let's save that, go into Unity, and we should now be able to hit our crate. You can of course bump up this force to make it more visible. Currently, we are able to shoot as fast as we can click the mouse. Normally, you want to have a limit on how quickly you can shoot a gun. And maybe you want your gun to be automatic. In that case, we need to define a fire rate. Let's go into our script, create another public float, and this one is going to be the fire rate. Let's just default it to something like 15. Then what we do is down here, create a private float. And this is going to be the next time to fire. And we'll default that to zero so we can fire right off the bat. We then check here if the player presses the fire button and our current time, so time.time, .time, is greater than or equal to the next time to fire. If it is, we want to shoot. And we also want to set the next time to fire equal to our current time plus one divided by the fire rate. This means that if our fire rate is four, we are going to add one divided by four, which is 0.25 onto our current time. And so we're going to shoot in intervals of 0.25 seconds. The greater the fire rate, the less time between shots. Let's close that off with a semicolon. Let's also remove the down here. That means that we can just hold down our mouse button in order to automatically fire. So let's save that, go into Unity. And when I now press and hold down mouse one, we can auto fire. Awesome. So the final thing that I did for the demo scene here was make the crate destructible. I covered that in a separate video. So if you want to do that for yourself, definitely check it out. It's actually really, really simple. So now we have everything that we need to create awesome looking shooting mechanics. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'll have a video coming out this Sunday on weapon switching. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely make sure to subscribe. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in March and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Kellhound and Jason the Tito. If you want to support the channel and become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot, guys.